Hey guys, today we're going to be solving radical equations, radical style. So, uh, first things first, uh, this key concept kind of gives you some step-by-step -step instructions. Um, it says to first isolate the radical on one side of the equation. That means, to the best of your ability, get one equation or get one side of the equation so that the uh, radical sign is by itself. So like on 1A, I want to get rid of, or I want to try and get this radical piece to be by itself. So I'm going to get rid of the minus 1 by adding 1 to both sides. Okay. Then, um, the opposite way to get rid of a radical sign is by squaring it. I think you guys pretty much already know that. Except for whatever you do on side you have to do to the other. So 6 squared is 36. That just cancels. You don't have to worry about doing anything fancy. You just cancel out that radical sign. And so my final answer, I need to get x by itself. My final answer is 38. Now this is very important. You need to plug your answer back in and double check it works because sometimes it'll give you a negative number and that's not good. Um, not that negative numbers aren't good, but that you don't want a negative number um, underneath a radical sign. That's what I should have said. Okay, so I take 38 and I plug it back in up here. Um, 5 equals the square root of 38 minus 2 quantity minus 1. So 38 minus 2 is 36 and the square root of 36 is 6. 6 minus 1 is 5. It looks like that checks out. So 38 is actually my answer. Wee Let's try 1b. Things go a little bit funky here on 1b. First of all, I have two radical signs. Um, one on each side, I can't really combine them, nothing to be done. So in a case like this, try to get the bigger radical sign by itself. So x plus 15 would be the bigger radical sign because there's more stuff going on. And we're going to go ahead and square it like I did on the first problem. However, remember when you're squaring, you're squaring the entire side. So it's like it gives me little parentheses there. So that will give me cancels x plus 15 on this side. And then I think on the right, I'm going to have to recognize that this is a little mini foil problem. So 5 times 5 is 25, plus 5 root x, plus 5 root x, plus the square root of x squared, which will allow that to cancel. So now what I need to do is um, subtract 25 from both sides. Uh, combine like terms. I don't need a plus sign, do I? That will just be 10 root x plus x Go ahead and subtract 10 from both sides. Oh, they both canceled. Okay, so now I'm basically kind of like um, where I was on the last problem, where you need to work to get the radical sign by itself. So to do that, I'll divide by 10. And that gives me negative 1 equals the square root of x. And if I square both sides, then 1 equals x. So it's kind of a lot of work, but I think we got somewhere. But like I said, you always need to plug it back in and double check. So this is me plugging it back in. The square root of 1 plus 15, does that equal 5 plus the square root of 1? I'm plugging in 1 for all the x's. Well, on the left, I have 16, which is just 4. The square root of 16 is 4. And on the right, I have 5. Should have written that a little higher. 5 
plus the square root of 1 is 1, 5 plus 1 is 6. Those don't equal each other. That's not equal. So this one is no solution. Why did this happen? Well, look back up at this step right here. See how I had, um, I divided both sides by 10, and I got a negative 1 is equal to a square root. No matter what a square root I would have ever taken, it can't possibly equal a negative number, not without getting into imaginary numbers. So that's why this one is no solution. Um, what these two equations are clarifying is that you can, um, sometimes they're going to give them to you in radical form, or in uh, exponent form like this, so you need to write it in radical form. Bring that 3 out for the third root of 3n plus 2. And then the other thing that they want you to realize on these is if, it was, if a squaring gets rid of a square root, then cubing gets rid of a cube root. Of course, 0 cubed is just 0. And then you can solve from there. Um, nothing too fancy after that, on this one anyway. You know what, I forgot about this plus one all the way up there. I've made a huge blunder. Sorry folks. Um, what I should have done was subtract one from both sides. I got too excited about getting to rewrite this as a radical sign. Okay. And um, negative 1 cubed is actually negative 1. Crazy, right? Now we solve. Now things are looking a little better. Okay, plug it in, double check it works, all that good stuff.